Hey everybody, this is Brian and welcome to the 30th LAMP tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing error handling. Okay, um, one thing you'll see a lot in PHP scripts is called the die statement where you're saying die. Um, the example they give here is if not file exists, meaning the file does not exist, then die, file not found. All die does is, well, it kills PHP. It tells PHP stop processing, just exits. Um, you can give it a reason and that's actually considered bad form. I don't like doing that. Um, the reason being is there's better ways of doing it. And if you read the whole um, W3Schools or whatever you're using, you know, maybe a book you're reading, you can create a custom error handler. Um, notice how there's an error level. Required specifies the report level must be a valid number. Um, good example of that would be hmm, what level do you really want this to be at? and then there's an error message required this is the actual error message you're spitting out and then the error file line and context and those are all optional and then here's the different report levels like warnings notices etc 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 you, you read up all this stuff don't expect you to burn any of this into memory and you can see he, here is a custom error handler right here you have an error number and an error string and you're just echoing it out and then calling die to use that you would say set error handler and then the name of your function. We're going to actually see how all this works. They have an example here and I'm going to write something pretty similar just so it's up to speed here and we're going to say set error handler and we're just going to call this my error handler. It sounds like a really funky name. Actually let's call it, let's use their name, custom, custom handler custom error sorry a little scatterbrain today it's Friday I just spent an hour standing in line at the post office um, had to get a passport I'm not thrilled alright so now we're going to actually make a function we're gonna say function and notice how the name has to match up custom error custom error I'm gonna give it a variable the error number in the Air string. And now we're just going to, you guessed it, echo some stuff out. A little HTML goodness here. Anybody, anybody out there play Halo? Um, I got Halo 4, and oh man, I've been loving that. Um, I got it on the Xbox, so I'm not used to the controls. It's actually kind of messing with me a little bit because I'm used to the PC version. And we'll say error now. And then, of course, we're going to error string. So we're just going to print this out. There's our little web page down here. Notice how it's not printing anything because we haven't actually set an error yet. If you're quick and you saw there was something down there earlier, it's because I'd previously done this tutorial. Um, there's some weird setup with Record My Desktop. It'll get to a certain point and just stops recording the sound. So I'll make a whole 10 minute video and then it just stops recording. Really frustrating. We're going to trigger an error for an example and we're just going to say echo and we'll say test. Now, we're echoing out a variable that just simply doesn't exist. We haven't actually created this yet. So when we save and run, but error eight, undefined variable test. What's going on here? We're setting an error handler and we're saying use the custom error function which we just created. And in this function, we are echoing out some stuff. Now what you really should do is actually stop the execution of PHP at that point because you're no longer doing anything. Notice how that's not required. You can actually run, throw an error message, and just keep to keep on going. Now, in the die statement, you can also say a reason because I said so. And notice how that also prints out on the screen too. Pretty simple, pretty easy to use. Um, the reason why you would use a custom error handler and not just the die statement is you're overriding the die statement. Let's say you want to add in some sort of logic like uh, email an administrator or write to the log or 
you know, maybe store something in the database, you know, the number of failed login attempts, something along those lines. And we're actually triggering an error. There's a better way of doing this. So let's actually trigger an error. Now, why would you want to trigger an error? Well, that's a good question. You would want to trigger error if certain conditions happen. In this case, I'm just triggering it. See? This is my error. Now, in a real world application, let's do this. Let's cut this and say mm, i equals 3 if i is greater than 5 then echo do something just some very simple logic here and instead of this is my error we're gonna say da -da 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 -da, I is less than five now let's look at this really quickly why would you want to do something like this well we have a variable in this case we're saying three and this is purely example we're saying if i is greater than five then do something this could be like log in the user you know if their username and password equals this then do that otherwise we want to trigger an error actually raise an error or in some languages it's called throwing an error in other words we want to create an error condition save this use of undefined constant i assumed i hmm that's because i screwed up and didn't put that notice how our our error handler is working even as we screwed up there we go error 1024 i is less than 5 so you can see how we're actually triggering an error condition. Some things you might also want to do in your handler, I mentioned this earlier, is actually log something. And by log something, I mean you're going to actually write out to the system log, and you can also optionally email the administrator or whomever. So we're going to say error log. And notice how we've got some things here. Message, type, destination, extra headers. Well, let's handle that error string first. type we're just gonna say one because it's an error and now the destination the destination this is what this would technically be not technically typically be an email address don't use my email address for testing I will simply blackmail you and you will never hear a response from me ever okay now for the extra headers if you paid attention during our email topic you can see you can add extra headers let's actually say no reply at website.com and run that now you notice how we have the same results let's actually refresh here same results but what happens in the background now is we're writing out to the log and in about 30 seconds my phone's gonna go bing you got mail and I'm gonna have this nice little message mailed to my phone that's all for this tutorial. I hope you found this educational and entertaining. I realize we are just scratching the surface of what air handling can actually do, but we're going to see more of it in coming tutorials.